Hello everyone, welcome to Edipedia World. I am C. Radhika Singhal. In the last session, we were on marginal cost of capital. So marginal cost of capital is the cost for raising the additional source of finance. Additional source to the company generally raise all the funds in one go. No, practical this is not the scenario. Practically, company raise the funds in piecemeal. Moreover, the company has to maintain the capital structure also. It's not like that that the company will raise the finance from one source. So that will generally disturb the capital structure of the company. And apart from that, cost. Company has to look over the costs also. Company will not raise all the funds in one go because that could escalate the overall cost to the company. And the other thing is limitation of resources. The cheapest resource or the cheapest fund is not always available. There is some limitation over it. Though the company will try to utilize it first, but after it is fully exhausted, the company will raise the finance from the expensive source of finance. This is how, so for every point, like if the company has raised a cheapest source of finance up to one point, we will compute marginal cost of capital at each point. These points are called as breaking points. That is when one source of finance is exhausted and the company will utilize the another source of finance. This is called as schedule of marginal cost of capital. So let's do an example and all these breaking points I will be quite clear to you. XYZ Limited has the following book value capital structure where equity share capital 15 CR. 11% preference share capital 1 CR, retained earnings 20 crores, 13.5 debentures 10 CR crores, 15% term loans 12.5 CR. The next expected dividend on equity share per share is rupees 3.60. The dividend per share is expected to grow at a rate of 7%. The market price per share is rupees 40. Preference stock redeemable after 10 years is currently selling at rupees 75 per share. Debentures redeemable after 6 years are selling at rupees 80 per debentures. The income tax rate for the company is 40%. Students know that generally the questions are quite lengthier. So what you can do when you see such a lengthy question, like the way I highlighted the important points you can start marking, but don't mark all the important points in first go. First, read the question thoroughly in the first step. And when you're going to read it twice, start marking the important points, which are which the information you are going to utilize to solve your question. Define the weighted marginal cost of capital schedule of, for XYZ company if it raises rupees 10 crores next year, given the following information. So what's the information? The company will be raised by equity and debt in equal proportions. That is the target capital structure will be 50% of equity and 50% of debt. The company expects to retain rupees 1.5 CR earnings next year. Perfect. The additional issue of equity share will be result in net price being fixed at rupees 32 per share. And the debt capital raised by way of term loans will cost 15% for the first 2.5 CR and 16% for the next rupees 2.5 CR. So just note down all the important information. So our step one is to determine out of 10 years, that is what is the breakup of this 10 CR? How much is the proportion of equity and how much for the proportion will be debt? So we'll go with the first point. The amount will be raised by equity and debt in equal proportions. So you got an idea that 10% that is 10 crores, 5 crores will be financed by equity and 5 crores by debt. And retain earnings is a part of equity itself. Perfect. So let's just, I have just draw the information in a diagrammatic form. Debt. So which one you're going to utilize first? 15% term loan will exhaust at 2.5 CR. After that you have to utilize the higher debt cost. 16% equity 
which one is the most cheapest one retained earnings so the company is going to utilize the cheapest source that is retained earnings first and then to raise the additional funds the company will utilize equity share capital so 1.5 cr is the retained earning balance and 3.5 cr is the equity share capital and 2.5 cr each of the term loans okay so which one is the cheapest source of finance here so for that we have to compute the cost of the specific source of finance for each capital so for 15% term loan and for 16% term loan since the interest rate is different the cost to the debt for either of the two will be different so step 1 is to determine that how much amount you have to procure from different sources of finance step 2 compute the specific cost of capital for each source of finance so cost of debt 1 will be 9% cost of debt 2 that is 16% term loan will be 9.6% retained earnings is 16% and cost of equity is 18.25% okay so which source you are going to utilize first the cheapest one 9% how much the cost it is available 2.5 cr but there is one more condition that you have to maintain the target capital structure that is 50% of equity and 15% of debt so for equity you will first utilize the retained earnings as that is more cheaper but that the amount is 1.5 cr so first you are going to utilize retained earnings an equal amount of debt you are going to issue that is 1.5 cr retained earnings and 1.5 cr term loan this means that the retained earnings will fully exhaust when you raise 3 crores of fund amount this 3 crore is called as first breaking point because at this breaking point your one source of finance is completely exhausted so this will be the third step that is determination of breaking point so after retained earnings we are going to utilize 15% debt fully we have already raised 1.5 cr so next is utilization of 1.1 cr the 15% debt for raising 15% debt again we have to simultaneously see issue equity share capital of 1 cr in order to maintain the target capital structure So 3 CR, we have raised at first point. Next point, balance 2 CR. That is, we have already raised 5 CR. And the balance funds of 5 CR will be financed through 16% term debt and equity share capital. So now we are going to compute the weighted average cost of capital at each breaking point. So at point one. 15% debt 1.5 cr equity retained earnings 1.5 cr weight being 50% of each cost the wacc will be 12.5% similarly we are going to compute the wacc at breaking point 2 that is when we have raised additional 2 crores 1 crore for 15% debt and 1 crore from equity so the cost will be 13.63% and the balance through 16% debt and balance with the equity this is 13.925% so to compute the overall cost of raising 10 crore additional funds will be 15% debt of 2.5 cr 16% debt of 2.5 cr retained earnings of 1.5 and equity share capital so we can either compute the weight of each source of finance and can multiply it with their specific cost or the other method at each breaking point we have computed wacc we can again multiply it with their weights and can compute the overall weighted average cost of capital so whatever we have discussed these are the steps to determine marginal cost of capital you can have a look over it however all these things are quite logical at how we did it this is just 
from a noting point of view in case you forget something the last concept equilibrium price equilibrium price that is a price at which the required rate of return that is the ke as per kappa model and as per the dividend growth model is same so to compute ke this step one we have to compute by applying ke by applying kappa's equation using that required rate of return or using that ke we are going to compute the price of the share using gordon model so ke can be computed by using the formula risk free return plus beta multiplied by the risk premium whatever is the ke that we have computed in step 1 using that ke we have to compute the market price of the share using the gordon model the price that we have computed using the gordon model is called as equilibrium price that is at this price the price of an equity share as per the kappam and as per the gordon model is same now why we are doing it what is the relevance of it we are computing the equilibrium price so that we can know whether we have what whether that equity share is overstated or understated in the market that is equilibrium price is compared with the actual price of the share so if the equilibrium price that is ep is more than actual price in that scenario we can say that share is underpriced so when the share is underpriced you can buy the share because in the market it is available at cheap however considering the expectation whatever equilibrium price that you have computed is more heavy it's more it's at a high price so in this case you can buy the share but do not sell that share vice versa if that ep is less than actual price share is overpriced so it is recommended not to buy that share in that scenario you can either sold it and if the equilibrium price is equal to actual price it does not matter share is correctly priced into the market so you can either purchase or sold this is the use of equilibrium price so let's do one more example to compute this equilibrium price the beta coefficient of abc limited is 1.4 the company has been maintaining 8% rate of growth in dividend and earnings the last dividend was paid was rupees 4 per share so the last dividend so this will be d0 return on government securities is 10% so this is a risk free return and on market portfolio is 15% current market price of the share is rupees 36 so you know that as on date the market value of the share is this so you have to compute the equilibrium price so step 1 we have to compute ke using kappa model so ke is 0.10 that is risk free plus the 1.4 into market risk premium so using kappa model we get to know that cost of equity is 17% using 17% what will be the price of the share if ke is 17 that is 48 rupees so in the in question it is mentioned that market price of the share is rupees 36 as per cordon model what should be the market price it should be 48 this means that the market price of the share is less than the equilibrium price this means that the share is underpriced into the market so if the share is underpriced you can purchase however it is recommended not to sold next question is what would you advise purchasing the share so yes because it is underpriced that's all in cost of capital in case you have any query please leave a comment i'll cover all those topics thank you so much